All right. Um, can I have all the panels to open the camera for a while? Thank you. Just to make sure that everybody's here. Okay, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. So, um, welcome everybody. Thanks for your time. Um, thank you for um, having us today. Um, thank you for spending time for us um, with us today. So uh, I am Hadi, I am from EDEC and Faculty of Science. And um, for today's session, I am honored to be um, one of your moderators, um, the only moderator, not one of. Okay, and um, I am also grateful to all the panels um, for also providing your time to be here, um, to share a little bit on your experience, on your journey on um, applying for FRGS. And uh, we also have Encik Fedaus from BPGP with us today. Um, so he will share a little bit about what FRGS is, uh, I, I presume. And um, uh, before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, make sure that um, you, you can ask questions anytime, um, but please do not stop the presenter. So let the presenter finish off uh, the presentation first. And then we will have um, one or two questions um, from the audience, if you have any, or you can always uh, put your question in the chat. Uh, we will have a look at the chat once the presenter uh, has completed their presentation. Okay, so um, today we will start off with Encik Fidaus, um, followed by um, Dr. Hema, and then we will have uh, Dr. Yvon, and finally Dr. Nohidayah. Okay, so um, Without further ado, I would like to invite um, Chief Fidaus to um, share your screen and start your presentation. Welcome, thank you. Hmm. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Haji. Okay, um, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Um, okay, so today I would like to share, I, I will give an overview about uh, the research grant. So let me share my my slide first. Uh, hey, can you you want to see my slide, right? Not yet. Um, why am I the only one? Uh, yes, we have. Yeah, yeah, lah. <clears throat> okay. Ah, uh, today I would like to share about the research grant management in University Malaya. Okay. So as far as we understand. This is the UM top management uh, and the management of research and innovation were put under the Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, which led by Professor IR Dr. Shalika Ibrahim. Okay, <clears throat> so we are under uh, GBC RI. Okay, so under the GBC RI, we have a, a, a several uh, Institute or center, which one, uh, which is, uh, Institute of Wilkan Dampik IBE. So, BPGP was, uh, under the management of IBE, and then under DBC RNI, we also have UMX, which is like us. High UE, UMPOE, uh, top down research center, and, um, uh, uh, UM Sustainability uh, Center, okay? So, this is the structure of uh, r and in UM. Okay, so, under, under the IEPP, okay, so the director of I, the executive director of IEPP is uh, Professor Dr. Saifur Anwar Asani, and then uh, the head of division of research management, uh, which is me, uh, me. <clears throat> and then under BPGP, we have uh, two uh, group of management. First, the, on your left side is B uh, Award. B Award Management means research grant and PSL management, which led by our officer, Khaled Wagura, no Atika, and Norma. So, as you can see, Khaled uh, Wagura, she managed the application of international grant, private grant, uh, national innovation grant like Start with Joy Research, uh, Georgia University innovation, uh, uh, matching grant, and PPRN. Okay, 
while under Chad Anopi, she managing a FIGF, Global Education Grant, uh, MRT Hadjax, and so on. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Oyan Norma, she managed the application of MOCI, which is Grant, LRGX, IIRG, and BA, but one has, uh, but one achieved in the Grant, uh, and all the internal, internal, uh, which is Grant, um, Open or awarded by Himalaya. Okay, so that is the award. For the first award is Research Grant Expenses and Monitoring, where we monitor, we broadcast the expenses or the approval or we recommend the expenses of Research Grant and we monitor the uh, progress report or project achievement uh, in general. Okay, so for international and private grant, uh, led by uh, Wan Bahia, so she is the official for both award, and then for FRGX, LRGX, LRG, uh, LRG, most of FRGX research grant uh, was monitored by uh, the, the Hong Kong line, and then for most e, most e research grant and other government agencies uh, and other MOHI research grant. Uh, of Asia project top down for Mohi will be monitored by uh Chief Figura and the uh, government agency grant will be monitored by Dr. Uh, Akma. <coughs> so basically in BPGP we have two two management team lah for each project. One is pre award and the post award. Okay, so actually uh, I would like to highlight about our role, role in, in managing the research grant in UMS. So we develop internal, so for the P award, P award we develop uh, the internal research program funded by UM, some like UM in FRUP and so on. And then we try to identify the funding opportunities and potential applicants to apply for that particular research grant. So, some, uh, we will monitor the grant record or the progress of grant application, uh, where have been committed to the funder and we shall follow up. Lah. So, we also assist and coaching. Before this, we assist, but now we try to coach every single researcher in proposal development and budget, budget working and pricing. Lah. We try our best because the number of uh, application uh, keep on increase from time to time. Okay, so on top of that, to ensure the quality of research proposal, we coordinate the proposal peer review by the panelists. So let's say if you are, actually we are depend on the funder guideline. Some of the funder, they, uh, they, they are not, <coughs> they, they are not set the open for uh, proposal evaluation, but in order to to ensure our proposal are at the certain standard, we we need to to conduct a peer review. I I I didn't say it is a evaluation. It is peer review. Peer review means someone senior review your proposal and then or uh, review your proposal and that person also have an experience applying that grant that you apply the research grant that you apply and then. That person can uh, advise you what to do, what what to and what to uh, don't lah. Okay, and then the last part is we submit the proposal to the funder, uh, which come of the funder like uh, Japan Foundation and so on. They wanted us to submit the high of proposal to the to their office in Japan so before by certain deadline. So we are. Uh, I think uh, we are um we try to accommodate our PI by by arrange the the posting uh the post uh of proposal lah. So and then in the same time we 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 a system from legal legal office we try to we try to draft and negotiate the MOA between UM uh researchers and fund uh and funder lah. And the last part is we are creating the research grant in account in IGMS. So once the account create in IGMS, the account can be counted in your API lah as a researcher. Okay. So for 
of our oppressor <coughs> it is divided into two oppressor okay, so one is uh expenses which is human uh we monitor all the expenses according to the proposal and so on because um because uh since uh recently uh it is a tight budget uh, for Mohi and uh, any other father, so they are looking to monitor what has been expensed during the second year. So at your end, each we need to monitor or or back to negotiate with the father if there is a uh, special need or buying equipment or expenses related to the second And then uh, we also uh, monitor the budget allocation and Yes, we prefer. We prefer office pertaining to the research grant expenses. Yes, some of our researchers having a problem and in their money or they have some issues regarding the, the procurement processes. And then we, we, we are uh, like, maybe we like a uh, mediator. We, we try to negotiate with the highlight and explain the, the, the nature of research uh professors and expenses in uh in UM. Uh. So other than that we also monitor the progress and final report, we try to catch uh catch up some uh information from the project, some sort like uh, publication and so on. Uh, and then we we uh, appeal uh, appeal to the funder for project extension, talking of account, can you apply and so on. <clears throat> okay, so, other, so the last part is the management of the grant. So we, we, we uh, enhance or improve, right, to improve our research grant guideline from Anna according to university needs or uh, ministry requirement. So, and then we also manage the research grant data based on our GMX and so on. And then we, we also uh, manage the online system as well as we develop uh, the new mod module uh, to, <coughs> to facilitate the needs of our PI. Lah. Okay, so uh, a few years back, we, we uh, collaborate with our uh, ADEC. Um, the uh in product in and uh emerald emerald program so we we try we try to we try to to give uh really new knowledge about uh research grant to our junior junior member uh, so we also advising internal and external external partners in joint management support like we have in Malaysia uh, <coughs> So when they are developing their research guideline and we try to assist on that. Okay, so what is research grant? I think you all know what is research grant is a cup of money to the research to undertake their project. So under the research grant, we have some board under that, which is what level organ is salary and wages. Uh, to hire the GIA uh, and IOA. Some of the grant they allow PI to hire IOA as well. So, and then after that, we have payable and expenses submission. This is a subject to the funder regulation. Uh. Rental, supply, other, and other materials, put in the seven organ, some sort of like uh, chemicals and so on. Uh, we also <coughs> The research grant also support maintenance and minor repair and then professional services and other services come to like open free, uh, public action free, uh, uh, special analysis on your, for your lab and so on. And the last part is both, uh, the other is equipment. <clears throat> Most of the funder will, uh, limit the, the, uh, Education, uh, equipment education up to 40 percent. Okay, so other than that, we also have additional additional work which is in on things of overhead cost and direct cost. So most of international grant they are support overhead cost and direct cost, which is overhead cost. Uh, it's about the uh, staff cost, staff cost to 
conduct the to undertake the research work that uh, under the children that they approve. Okay, so that is uh, opposite of. In, well, in direct of is the uh, facilities like uh, internet and so on. So that one, that one operated under indirect of. So most of private and industry grant they support, support this uh, expenditure under their grant. Okay, so this is the category of research grant. So university, we consider as internal research grant. So example, internal research grant, uh, internal research grant, the source of one is from research university fund, RU, R, uh, or in Malay, we do university medical, PUP. And then, uh, and university Malaya fund itself. So some of our PTJ, they offer the grant to their researchers, so uh, that one we offer as UM, uh, UM fund. Uh. So example of university grant is IRG, GPF, partnership grant, uh, and UM matching grant, and UM grant as well. Uh. So national, national OA, that uh, university is in an American grant OA. For external grant, we have national, private, and international. OA so national, is like uh, FRGS grant, XRGS, um, which under MOHI, and then ad, under government agencies like MOHI, MCFP, ADK. Lah. So this is all under uh, uh, for under national grant. Okay, for the private grant, is uh, received, uh, private grant we receive from private agencies, industry, society, or any company established in Malaysia. So, uh, for example, like um, Magna, and then they say Shell Malaysia. Shell Malaysia considered is considered as private grant. Okay, uh, because because it is Shell under Malaysia, uh, not Shell US. Kalau if Shell US, okay, we consider it is international lah. Okay, for international grant, uh, we receive from international partner, our international partner sometimes, and then agencies, institution, or foreign government like NIH, uh, National Institute of Health, and then the Own Shakespeare Foundation, the Bay Foundation, UNESCO, Erasmus, and so on. Okay, so this is a category of research grant uh, we have in UM. Okay, this is basic for research grant application processor. So once we once BPGP receive uh, the information uh, about the research grant, we will announce. Actually we we will study the grant requirement and guideline. Uh, for the we will check with the father or with the person in charge about uh, requirement uh, or put, uh, further information from the funder and then after that, only we announce via email and, uh, and website as well. And then after that, we develop the proposal and submit uh, the proposal to BPCP. Lah. Then we will conduct peer review. Peer review and PI revise the proposal accordingly. <clears throat> For certain cases like FRDX, we will conduct evaluation. Evaluation means there will be a reaction at UM level. Okay, but for we are in support all our all researchers uh, in applying uh, government agency grant, uh, private and international. So we are try to do a peer review uh, and we <coughs> we advise them to revise the proposal accordingly. Okay, so for FRDX, the peer review shall be uh shall be done at what level before you submit to BPGP before the deadline on first March. Okay, and then the after that after the proposal has been revised, we do the final final endorsement with the proposal or for or sometimes we we prepare the supporting or cover letter before submit to the funder. Lah. And then we notify the regard from the funder actually and then we before we create the uh, account in RGMX. <clears throat> okay, so that is a basic process about the grant application which does not include the process of MOA 
why we need to to revise every word the <coughs> MOA many times with between you and funder before we before our we sign the sign the MOA. Okay, <coughs> so this is the, in general this is the uh basic uh basic information in in the research proposal which we have title and then the take of research team, <coughs> research exactly summary, research information, anything equipment and materials which is, is what focus on what we have in current and what we have to apply yeah, to the budget, budget description and so on. And then in the same time, uh, there are risk management, uh, risk management that we need to take care of. And then the last part is declaration and uh, provide support in document. Okay, so in general, uh, this is the description, the full description about the uh, the port or the education under the curriculum. So I think I, yeah, maybe this one you all can read, read I, I will share, will share this, uh, this slide later. On. Okay, so uh, this is about the maintenance and uh, about maintenance, professional services and <coughs> equipment. Actually, uh, each need to read carefully about the budget regulation set by the uh, ni lah, uh, set by the uh, funder. Yeah. So role okay so our role in increasing <coughs> increasing the research grant opportunity so what we can do is we try to increase the opportunity so as a, as a pi you need to build up, build up a networking with international partners from maybe euro and so on japan so on, and then you strengthen your research research visibility and then if uh, I need your operation to inform BPGP if there are any recent grant calls for internet processes, uh, uh, for internet organization. Okay, so for PTJ, we are suggesting PTJ to build a network with the, with the, the research partners and then, um, to ensure the continuity of research collaboration between you and autopilot, because we believe that there are some research collaborators between PTJ and uh, <coughs> autopilot, uh, over, uh, overseas autopilot as well. So we are hoping that you and autopilot will actively apply for an in international research grant to craft in the research collaboration. And then, uh, we also hope that PTJ try to increase the visibility of young culture. <clears throat> okay, so at PTJP, we are actively search for research grant opportunity, local and national, and we get further information before we disseminate to the campus. Lah. So this is what we have been doing uh, now, and we try to improve uh, from time to time. So, and then we try to build a good repo uh, with the funder so that it, it, it will lead us to negotiate on certain issues about the grant uh, awarded. And then we try to identify the potential research grant. So, normally we try, at, mm, we try to find the potential by looking at the previous application. So, we will approach the previous application uh, to we buy uh, and we submit their yeah, proposal again and we we will send to the to our panel for peer review review and try to improve that from time to time. Okay. So that's all for me about the about brief information uh, about the research grant. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um Mr. Fidaus. Um I open the floor now. If you have any questions specifically for uh, Chief Fidaus, we will accept two questions for now. And perhaps um, after all the panels I have presented, we will open the floor again for any q and Is there any questions? You can um, unmute yourself uh, or you can just type it in the chat. 
Anyone? Uh, hi, good afternoon, Mr. Fridaus and uh, Dr. Hadi. I am uh, Mugunda from a Faculty of Science. Uh, Mr. Fridaus, I would like to request uh, whether PPGP can consider to extend the submission date of the FRGS because I feel the 1st of March is too near and we just settle our exam matters now. So it would be better if we can have another one week ahead so that we can plan the proposal properly before the uh, before summit to the internal evaluation. So and I really hope uh, PPGP will consider this, uh, uh, Mr. Fredaos. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mugunda, for your question. Why do okay? Actually, we have. So to to now the FRGS thing, FRGS again when it we think last year, but yeah we understand your direct situation as we know that you uh all the emissions are being given with India and the Ujjain Mark and so on. Ah, uh, let me talk to Mark Hayful and then we'll get back to you lah. But from the timing. The deadline is on first March. Any, uh, if anything update, we will let you know. Uh, will you am in for? Okay. Okay, sure. Thank you so much, Mister Fidel. Alright, thank you. Okay. Um, any more question? One more. We can accept one more question if there's any. One, two, three. Okay, so. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pidaus, for um, yeah, the yeah. brief introduction about PPGP and all the contents on what uh, PPGP uh, can do for UM. Uh, we will bring this up later on uh, towards the end of the session. So now uh, I would like to invite um, Dr. Hema okay, to um, share her experience in um, applying for FRGS grant and then receiving the grant itself. Okay, so for your information, so basically, this session will have three panels that will share their journey. And basically, we ask them the same question. Number one, what is the experience in terms of their proposal? OK, um, number two, the do and don'ts. Uh, or perhaps they might know, perhaps they don't know. But uh, we will go and see what are the things that they do, especially. OK, and the third one is the help that they receive from each PTJ. So we will see that. And hopefully we can share among our PTJs. If it's a good practice, we might want to, you know, grab it up, um, improve in our own system. Um, or otherwise, we might do something else. Okay, so without further ado, um, I will give the floor to Dr. Hema, please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hadi. And hi, fellow friends. My name is uh, Hema Subramaniam. I'm I'm from uh, Department of Software Engineering, Faculty of uh, Computer Science and Information Technology. Uh, actually, I joined UM starting from early uh, 2021. So this is my second year with uh, UM. And uh, for your information, I managed to secure one FRGS grant for the cycle of 1-2022 from the field of uh, social science, which I will share the journey, uh, how I managed to get the grant uh, for that particular cycle. So is this slide visible to you? It's visible, but it's not full screen yet. Or is it just me? OK. OK, now it's all good. OK. So uh, and let me start with uh, when I start uh, of uh, trying to apply for this FRGS because normally uh, we as an academician, we always uh, want to go for this FRGS, right, rather than the other grant. This is the very famous grant for us. So uh, I'm not the exceptional case. So I also applied for this FRGS since uh, 2017, which uh, when I was with my previous university. And initially when I started, it uh, was rejected uh, at the technical aspect itself, not even go to the KPT level. So uh, at the IPT, it was rejected because of some technical issues that uh, appear in my uh, grant. Then after that, I tried to apply again on 20, 2018, 2018. 
uh, also rejected, but this time uh, the technical part, I, I managed to go through the technical part, but uh, the proposal itself, uh, it has uh, some issues, okay, it, in terms of the content and so on. So what are the issues is something like uh, the expected output is not clear. These are the comments that I uh, take it from the migrant. Okay, normally when you go to your migrant, you can see your previous application, whether it was uh, rejected or whether it was approved with a comment from the KPT and IPT panels. So uh, from what I see, I try to relook into my previous um, run application and then I managed to uh, understand where is my problem actually. Maybe the problem is about the expected output which was expected by the panels are not there and it's not clear and also the problem statement uh, without any references where I just short sniri lah in a, another way I can say I feel like it is a problem but for them it is not a problem okay and also the research methodology is too brief so these are the comments that given in the year of 2018 so I tried to improve more on the 2019 if you ask me do I had the same title from 2017 to 2019 uh, my answer will be no, because I try to venture into a different, different thing so that I want to see my luck, whether I able to or manage to get it or not. So in 2019, I use uh, to get the same thing. The results will be rejected at that point of time. I feel like maybe I because I'm the leader, I'm not been uh, accepted. So I try to join with another person, another um, of my colleague from the previous university as well. And we tend to revise the, um, what is that, the grant and then the proposal, but also been rejected. Uh, but uh, this time they said they are, our research method used is uncertain, difficult to foresee the outcome. And also we starting to see whether uh, the, the panels trying to see whether it is fundamental or not. And uh, with all these inputs in 2020, actually, while I was in a previous university, I managed to get one. OK, but uh, since 2021, I um, uh, uh, Almost at the end of 2020, I get this grant, but uh, 2021, I, I about to join UM, so I cannot fully, um, fully able to uh, enjoy this grant because it was at the previous university as a PI. So now, since I already joined UM, I become the co-PI for this. But the the whole uh, proposal drafted by myself and. I managed to, uh, the, the, the proposal accepted and the comments I got, it's really made me happy because uh, the whatever comment that I got it previously, uh, it is totally uh, opposite of those comments. Okay, the, the panel feel like the title is interesting, contain the elements of FRGS, well-balanced team, good and clear indication of expected result. So from this, I try to utilize the same concept into when I joined UM, which is last year. Uh, 2022 also accepted so they they tried to see uh, whether my my proposal got any impact so this is the part where when I see in 2017 uh, starting from 2017 until now I uh, I can see that uh, actually the expectation from the panel also evolved Previously, they just see whether it is fundamental or not but now I can see the panel are uh, going towards uh, even though it is only a fundamental, but, but how in future it's going to give some contribution, especially to the uh, national policy. Okay, so uh, why, what, what I do see when I see these rejections? Okay, normally when see rejection, we feel very sad, right? And I, when continuously feel these rejections, I feel like, oh, okay, Emma, you got to do something, you got to uh, change something in the proposal. So what I do is I take some comments from the um, panels, especially on the IPT panel as well as the uh, KPT panel. So if you all see this KPT results, what I see, uh, majority of the panels, they see title need to be further rephrased. This is not recommended one. This is one example of 
uh, rejected one okay from my proposal okay and the methodology not being stated clearly proper statement without any references uh, and uh, they do see like the uh, objective are not matched with the uh, meet, uh, match clearly with the methodology and so on. So with this comment, I try to refine my the, uh, my proposals, and from this I get all the um, another. I this is I screen capture from another proposal with a different year, which is 2022 one. Right? So I I got these kind of comments because I try to relook into whatever uh, comments that been given by the panel which i feel like at that point of time when i read i did everything correct but why they feel like it is not correct so i don't feel like that but after that uh, i see like okay maybe they are seeing it in a different angle so i need to see in that angle as well so when i see in that angle i try to uh, rephrase or re uh, do certain certain parts in my proposal so i try to get this kind of comments okay so what are the steps i took in order to see this okay the first one uh, normally when we uh, teach research methodology we always say uh, we need to look into your project research going to contribute what what are you going to contribute to the community to the society to the industry so in this case we are not only seeing to the community society industry we also have to see the first thing if this research uh been published how it going to help the grant providers because they are the people going to give us money of course they we need to serve something to them so for the first start what i did i tried to find the information of this research first which domain it belongs to which cluster it belongs to and then uh what uh my STIE that I'm going to cover because when I uh, did not come out with this mapping first it really hard for me to map my title with the whatever clusters that been identified earlier in the research proposal so when I did this I could clearly see how this research is going to contribute to the grant provider which is the uh, ministry who are providing the grant to us which is to the nation of course okay and at the same time they always ask us to align with the sdg align with the uh, spv the share prosperity visions align with the rmk the uh, research uh what is that uh, rancangan malaysia ke doblas and all that so when we trying to do this mapping we can clearly see how this grant or the, the, the title that we are proposing going to help those uh, uh those uh clusters okay so from there i try to identify uh okay which research domain that i want to focus uh into like for example initially i mentioned i'm from software engineering but when i go to some of the uh talk that uh, uh given by uh, P uh ppgp previously uh, from the panels the previous previous panels i do understand that normally when we are previously i do send my my title everything to it cluster to the ict cluster but uh, what i understand from there whatever i propose to the it cluster is not a new things for them that is what the fundamental things comes in so when it is not new for the IT, so I try to see whether is this can be a new thing for the another cluster or not. If I incorporate this two, which is IT and another field of research. So when I did that, yes, uh, it can be go into the another cluster as long as it is fundamental for that particular cluster. So that is why I try to target the other clusters. Okay. So this is why my uh, proposal are under social science but i'm actually a um a person from the software engineering department okay so that is for the step number one so the, the step number two we try to draft the contribution first like for example what i did after i understand where am i going to contribute which cluster which spv which trust and then which uh, domain and everything i try to see 
uh, try to draft the executive summary because as what I get to know from the panels, previous, previous uh, talk of NI attend, the panel always mention, uh, we will look into the executive summary first. If the executive summary is not so convincing, we are not going to see the other parts. This is what I get it from the panels. So for that purpose, what I did is I tried to look into the executive summary and try to put not only problem statement, not only solution in the executive summary. I also try to map how the clusters are can be contributed in the it can be explained in the executive summary. OK, so once I understand what are the documents to refer into, I try to read those documents and from there I try to get clusters, the economic drivers, the SPV, the RNK12. And from there only I try to draft the executive summary. So this is my second step where I try to incorporate. The third one is to set the objective. Once we understand these are the contribution that we're going to do. That means we need to ask some questions. So I try to ask questions where I don't know the answer yet, which I'm trying to look for the answers. So those types of questions help me to create my objective, which is I try to uh, draft the objective in a smart perspective, where we know the smart should be specific, should be measurable, uh, should be achievable, realistic, and time bound. So for I do had. Uh, three objectives and for those three objectives I try to identify whether this objective is specific, whether it could be measurable or not, whether it could be measurable, achievable, realistic and within what time I can achieve this objective. So once I understand this, I have a clear objective, I try to find my team. So normally what we do, we try to find our team, then we discuss after that only we come out with this objective questions and so on. But for me, that um, uh, that kind of uh, strategy does not help me. So what I did, I tried to come out with my objective and everything. And from the objective, I tried to find which people can help me into that. Okay. And then uh, for this, I try to include every team member OK, every core researcher going to be in my team. Uh, what is their task? They going to help me in which objective? So that is why in a, in a FRGS Quran, if you look into the form, uh, we all of us are very familiar with the form. There's a one part in the team uh, section. They ask what is the role? So in that part, I try to map with the objective for them. OK. And as for the step number four, what I did, I tried to trace the problem statement because we need to know whether the problem is exist, the first one. Then we need to know whether it is worth to be solved or not and how we're going to solve it. So in order to do that, what I do, I did a traceability where I try, I gave them a, a table and uh, I have a three columns. For each column, I have a problem statement objective and question to know that these problem statements are traceable into RO and RQ. And I provide that table in the FRGS form. OK. And the major part, if you all see the um, the evaluation form for FRGS, the, may, uh, the highest mark is under research methodology where as I mentioned earlier in my previous research grants application, I always had an issue on this because uh, people always comment on uh, my methodology is not clear. So in order to make it clear, I need to clear myself first. Like, for example, how I can trace the objective to my research activities. So what I did when I draw the flowchart, normally when they ask for the flowchart, uh, in, in the FRGS, they always ask for the flowchart, right? So when I draw the flowchart, I try to map this, which is the research objective. OK, I list all my research objective and I try to map this research objective to the activities that I wanted to do. OK, and also I provide how this 
activities going to be performed? What approach I want to use? What instrument? What analysis technique? Do Is that going to involve any uh, peoples, any materials or not? So I try to specify into this one flowchart. And also I try to specify what output is expected on each phases. Each objective, I treat them as one phase. Okay, so this is just a flow chart, but after I draw this flow chart, I understand how the research is going to be look like as overall. So there are one part in the FRGS, they ask you to describe your research methodology. So when I have this flow chart, it helped me a lot in writing those methodology because I'm the person who visualize things. So I need to visualize first before I write. So I visualize, I said, okay, if I want to do this, I need this, I need this, I need this. So once I understand the whole picture of it, then only I started to write. So this is how I draft my uh, methodology. And then once I have a clear methodology, these are the activities that I wanted to do. The major part that normally, uh, I faced a problem is in order to understand the timeline, the budget. So for this, we need, we got no choice. We need to de refer to this guideline where the guideline is Karis Manduan Scheme uh, Grant Penyelidikan. So when we try to understand this, read the document, which would got how many percentage, how many per how, how much of percentage it need to be in, how much of percentage you cannot uh, go exceed that percentage and so on. Once we understand that, right, then we draft the activities. So for each activities, I try to give numbers. So these numbers will help me to define the roles of the co-investigators as well. So when I do these activities, actually I'm referring back to my flowchart just now. So when in the flowchart, I have activity number one, number two, number three, I use the same activity names in my budget so that uh, the people won't argue or the panel won't argue, is this budget is relevant or not? Because I'll say it is relevant because it is already stated in my research methodology. So what I did, I tried to put a number so that I know whatever start with one is my phase number one, whatever start with Two is my phase number two, and each phase has got how many activities, okay? And the last part is on the impact statement, which is uh, recently only they introduced this FR, uh, under the FRGS. They do have an impact statement. And initially, I thought, like, I don't want to give much uh, emphasis on this, but when I go to the... Um, some uh, of the sharing session from uh, clusters, research clusters, I do understand this impact is need to be uh, given an emphasis as well. So what I did, I give, uh, I try to uh, identify the impact in terms of society, in terms of economy, in terms of the nation as well. So I try to come up with this kind of diagram to show what is the impact, what is the outcome and what is the output for each of the component. Like for example, for the society, what impact it going to give? What is the, out the output that we are expecting? Okay, so with that, uh, the most important part in, uh, in doing the proposal is keeping the versions, okay? So in my proposal, these are my versions. I don't have only one version. Always, every time I do changes, I try to save as a different, different version to show that, to see myself, what are the things that I change, okay? So I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hima. Um, it's a very good information, uh, good practice as well. Um, just wondering, how many version of this presentation that you actually prepared? Oh, so for this presentation, actually I prepared two versions. Okay, since uh, I I do present this uh, previously into the UM early career researcher, so I enhance from there. I don't replace it. I enhance from there because I want to see how it is different from whatever I present before. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So we have a few minutes. Um, I would like to open Q uh, Q and A session 
to the floor. Anyone have any questions? I don't see anything on the chat. Um, okay, so um, I think there's none. Thank you so much, Dr. Hima. Okay. Okay, so we will move to um, the next panel, which is um, Dr. Yvonne. Uh, Dr. Hema, can you unshare as well? All right, thank you. Okay, we can see your slide. All right, so uh, without further ado, I would uh, pass the floor to um, Dr. Yvonne, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Yvonne from University Malaya Center of Proteomic Research. So I graduated from UM and joined UM as a junior staff in 2021. So thank you for having me in this sharing session to tell about my first FRGS application. I'm really thankful and lucky to be able to secure my FRGS as a first try. All right. So as a junior lecturer, um, I knew that I have to apply for this FRGS grant, but where to start? So to have an idea of what project to put in for application was really crucial for me. And back then I was involved in a project related to medical sciences. So then we decided to work on something similar, which is related to the ongoing project. So the idea was to apply the project under the medical science and healthcare my STIE. So we had an idea that we wanted to work on this field on good health and well-being for the SDG. So then we brainstormed and had a discussion session to see whether this project is realistic and workable or not. So now we have an idea of what project to work on. Next is the planning part. So I did a um, literature search, of course, at first to see whether there are similar projects done or is there something new and worth researching on for the project they were going to propose. So then I checked on the methods available. And there's also this website that I find it very useful, which is the lens.org. It's useful for um, patent search and also to search on the work done previously. So during this planning stage, we identify methods and where and what we'll be doing for the methods part. And then I got contact with the salespersons and I find it very useful actually to talk to salesperson because they always introduce and recommend um, new products that are available in the market. So from there, we can know whether our proposed methods are good and up to date. So next, we have a plan, so we need to put this plan into a draft. First, I had an outline. Then I'll start to write up the sections. I started off with the keywords, of course. And then I like to work with the methodology first because it gives me an idea on what experiments that I will be working on. Followed by the lead review, introduction, objectives, executive summary, and lastly, the title. So I do take note that the title and the executive summary is what gives the first impression of the project. So this is crucial that I need to get it right. Then I had my proposal review by the team members and also by some of the senior researchers. And at this stage, we can also start to identify and invite our industry partners. Besides that, I also attended a couple of workshops and seminars that briefs on the workflow and criteria for the FRGS application. And I've also attended sharing session like what we are having now. And apart from that, another training that I find it very useful is the proposal clinic, where there will be experts from the field of your proposal that will meet in face to face to actually give comments on the format and the technicalities. So I personally feel that uh, the critics will really 
very useful for the improvement of the proposal. And sharing here are some do's that I follow. First, of course, your proposal has to be well organized, easy to read, and using a clear language. And same as Dr. Hema, I also apply the SMART criteria. And I'm also aware that the proposal has to be fundamental and with a fundamental title as well, and a very good and well written executive summary. I included also updated references and quotations. And there's also images and figures for better visual understanding. And it's also good to have like preliminary data if they are available. For my project, yes, I do have some preliminary data from the project that I was working on. And also do include future plans for what's forward, the way forward for your proposed project. And of course, this is very crucial to start drafting your proposal as early as possible so that you meet the deadlines that are set by the university and also the migrant. And next, you should also have a composition of team members that has good track record and also relevant expertise. Lastly, do proofread before submission. This is very crucial. And I feel that you can ask peers from other fields to actually read your proposal. And if they understand your proposal, then it's probably good to go. And some things to avoid, which is not to do, is to actually prepare last minute and writing submission last minute. So besides that, also not having unrealistic large amount of work with too many objectives to achieve. And as an early career researcher, maybe we should not be too ambitious. And also avoid too lengthy and the use of too much of jargons. And please also do not ignore the FRGS proposal requirements and criteria. And lastly, always don't be shy to get feedback and comments from peers or seniors. So I really feel that getting critics and comments is really crucial in the improvement of the proposal. There are also some issues and challenges we are faced during the application. Firstly is with the migrant system itself. So there's some technical errors and technical issues during the submission. So please do draft and submit early into the system as a draft. And usually the deadline is also very short, the notice of the opening for submission. So do prepare early. And next is to put the ideas and the proposals to be within the ceiling budget of 250,000. As you know, medical research, sometimes they are quite expensive. So I had some problem with budgeting to put all the activities and materials needed within the budget. And lastly is to obtain the quotations and LOI from companies. This also might take some time and the companies, sometimes they don't reply to emails. So yeah, you have to send them in early and get in contact with the companies earlier. So in summary, um, I would suggest that to propose work based on your interests and background if you do not know where to start. So for my case, I was interested in therapeutics and my background was on proteins. So I work on a project that's relevant and related. And it's also important to have supportive and also relevant team members that they can contribute their expertise towards your proposal and your project execution in future. So for the proposal, I propose to have a project that aims to actually solve and improve on the current issues. And for the details of the application, you can always refer to the migrant system or just get in contact with BPGP. They are very helpful and they are really doing a very good job. So last but not least, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my FRGS team members, BPGP, and everyone that has helped me to secure my first FRGS grant. Thank you so much for your attention and all the best in your application. All right. Um, wait, wrong button. <laughs> Why did I raise my hand? Okay, uh, thank you to Yvonne. Um, do we have any questions from the floor? 
if there's none then let me ask you um just a quick one is this your first time receiving frgs you guys like yes. dr hima she received once before the yeah okay so in, in that sense um dr hima also mentioned that in, in her case um she had uh, planned the project first and then find the team members how about you for my case, because I was already working on a similar project, so this is to understand the fundamental part. So it was derived from a, another project. So we actually have the basics here. Okay, we have one question. Um, I think someone raised their hand. Um, Dr. Lim, if you would like to unmute. Yeah, please. Dr. Lim. Dr. Lim, are you here? We, we can't hear you. All right. Um, we, we can see can you. Hear you. Me? Can you hear me? Okay, now, yes. Oh, okay. No wonder. That's it. Okay. So, um, right. Thank you, Dr. Hadi. Can I hear it? Okay, yeah. So, um, Dr. Yvonne, yeah, it's very... It's very good that here you first time apply and then already got it. So um, just want, want to check with you that because uh, for you to write for the impact statement, do you have any, uh, actually how, how you work it out for that part, for the impact, the quintuple parts, that is the most, I think I found that that's the most challenging part for, um, for when, when you come to that area. So how, how uh, do you have any tips for on my, what, what you do for that part? Mm. Yeah, sure. For my impact statement, my objective was quite clear because we are working on therapeutics. So the impact will, of course, be on the good health and well-being of the society. So that wasn't really an issue because we actually target the health and that's always gives an impact to the society. Yeah. I see. Okay. So uh, maybe can I ask that for your first time you apply for how many years for that oh i put in a three years project yeah oh so is then the amount and the duration they also allow you for three years right yes they are out for three years oh, okay and okay. i i actually hit the ceiling of the budget <laughs> oh so your amount also hit the ceiling also yeah <laughs> we actually wow, go this... for the max for everything okay very good Okay, I think, yeah, think. just, just, uh, this is possible then, uh, give us a lot of motivation. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lim. Um, all right, I think that's all. We will move to the next speaker, our final speaker. Thank you, Dr. Yvonne. Yes, thank you. Okay, is Dr. Hidayah here? Okay, so perhaps you can um, share screen first. And um, the Tivon, can you unshare? Okay. All right. So meanwhile, um, I have a question for all the participants. So um, the poll is open now. So if you can just fill in your poll for very, very quickly. Just to get a grasp on um, what the audience experience is. All right. So uh, without further ado, I will uh, leave the floor to you, Atidaya, please. All right. Um. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. Um, thank you to Dr. Hadi. Right, um, can you see my slide? Nope. It was there. All right, okay. can you see now? All right. Yeah. All right. 
Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you to PPGP and edX for inviting me uh, to have this sharing session. So, um, well, this is not my first time of applying, um, and but Alhamdulillah, I got it for the last cycle. Right, um, so here um, today, I would like to just to share a five points. I think that I think it's very important uh, for me to share, right? So, um, first of all, um, how do I start? Yeah, so of course, you must start with the topic. Yeah, so on that time, I was thinking, what are the current issues, the current topic? Because this is fundamental research, so it must hit the fundamental. It must hit, it must have the impact to the society. At the same time, it must also relate it to my research interests. Okay, so what I do at that time is I collect all the proposal that from my um, friends, and and then um, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I forgot to introduce myself. Yeah, I'm Dr. Hudaya Abdullah. I'm from the Faculty of Law, um, but before this, I was in the Faculty of Economics, and and I my research interest was on business law. Right, so. Okay, I come back to the to the to the first point. Yeah, so on that time, I was thinking, how do I start? So um, it's quite challenging for me because I'm from the legal from the law faculty. I'm from the legal aspect, which I know it cannot. Uh, it has to be have something on impact to the society, right? So from my peer experience, that when I draft my uh, proposal, I think I need more. Okay, I need to have more. Uh, impact yeah so during that time yeah um the gig economy boom right so i was thinking there are lots of write-up about the gig economy workers yeah particularly unemployment where they don't they are bidon, they are not protected especially their yeah, uh, social benefit yeah so that time i do a lot of research yeah i do on the internet reading about them i even interview them and asking um, what do they want? Okay, what are the issues and challenges they're facing? Okay? So from there, I start to have a small write-up. Okay? Perhaps this is one thing that I think I can give impact to the society. I can also give contribution. And of course, it also related to my research interest where I focus on business law. Okay? So that's why I choose this topic, developing an institutional framework for protection of the gig economy workers in Peninsula Malaysia. So it was very focused, where I focus on the um, institutional framework for the uh, gig economy workers in Peninsula Malaysia, because the law in Peninsula and Sabah is very different. So I limited my scope um, uh, to this Peninsula Malaysia, right? So I, from there, I also read up some uh, proposal from a few friends that because I want to know how to make it fundamental because because we have the idea and we need to translate it into um, a framework. So I try to understand um, um, uh, the, uh, my colleagues' proposals and I also discuss with them. Yeah, and finally I I. I translate the other into the proposal. Of course, there are so many drafts as discussed by Dr. Hema, Dr. Vions, yeah. And then I got some idea, right? And then for the second uh, point, the method, yeah. So I knew that legal method is quite limited. We are we are much more drop penal study, where most of our research are more on uh, uh, library books, books, legislations, um, statutes. Uh, articles, very limited. So I knew that this is to serve the impact to society. So I contacted a friend of mine from the economics faculty where she focused on the label economic, right? So in my research, uh, research uh, objective, there will be uh, three research objectives. So two to the legal aspect and number, the, the second, um, the other one is from the economic aspect. Okay. So from that um, research objective, so it needs um, um, methods of qualitative. Yeah? So I mix the method. Okay? So the law part would be the fundamental part where it discuss the historical part, it discuss the fundamental value of it, it discuss the research, uh, research gaps. And for to test out, I mean, 
to know the real, I mean, the field work. So we use um, um, survey and um, inter interview. Okay. So in my research proposal, we interview uh, the, the workers, the gig economy worker itself, and then the stakeholder, and also the lawyers, the employment lawyers. So this is the plan, so that we reach to the society. Okay? So that's why I invited my former colleague from the economics faculty to join me so that we have a comprehensive method. Because as I mentioned by the previous presenter, the method must be very strong enough. Okay? So that's why I think a mixed method would be good. And I knew that I'm not good in mixed method because in law, we were legally trained more, almost on library research. Okay? And then number three, I think this is very interesting, the team members. Yeah. So in my team members, um, they are from the law faculty, they are from economics faculty, uh, because I need the experts and yeah? somebody that can quantify the uh, the, the data that we have. So I joined with the economic faculty inside the UM itself. And then I also have um, uh, my um, um, intern university from other faculty, which expert also in employment law. And because this is a fundamental uh, project, okay, we, so if we need impact yeah, from um, other university to show that we have a collaboration as a cooperation with other counterparts. So that's why um, I, I tried my best to search uh, from other university as well. Yeah, I think, and the next one uh, is about understand the process very well. So I think my first um, experience, because I don't understand, I, I, I get rejection. Yeah, I was, I don't understand the process very well. I think nowadays, um, PPGP has done a good job where they have, we have a roadshow, we expose, we have many sharing session. I mean, that will give me more idea. When I first started here, I mean, I have no idea. I have the idea in my mind, but I do not know how the process work. Yeah. And then there's a, you can see in the FRJ form that has optional um, uh, checklist, right? So I try to fulfill all the the, uh, the optional checklist, for example, letter for intent, right? When I was thinking about uh, my project, I always think, what can I contribute to the society? Which ministry? They will ask you which ministry. I said, on that time, if under themselves home affairs. So I contacted um, them um, um, to, to, to show them uh, my uh, a simple proposal that I give to them um, so to say that, um, um, look, I'm interested to uh, to do this kind of research and and I hope uh, they can give some uh, input to me, collaboration with me. So during that time, they don't respond to me. It takes me, I think, more than a month. You know, I was get, I was really get frustrated. Um, so uh, I did follow up. I called them an email and finally, I think, a uh, a uh, uh, one day before the full submissions of the Afra GS uh, form, I finally got it, you know. So I knew that, um, yeah, you need to have prior engagement, right? But since I'm quite new, I mean, uh, and this issue was um, was hotly debated last year, and then, and, and it, uh, they, were, they were telling me that um, um, they are very busy in forming, of course, they would like to enact the Employment Law Act, you know. So, but then I convinced them, you now this is part of it, so I would like to contribute. And alhamdulillah, uh, it goes well. You know? And then I think um, the, the best part is, I think I would appreciate PBGP as well, because they provided, um, um, uh, um, I think, um, the assessor, yeah. So my friend, at the faculty level, um, we we get an assessor. They give comment to my uh, proposal, which I found it's very very good, and I um I respond to the uh to the comment given, and later on to the university level, uh, they come back to see and say me, look, uh, this is very good, but you need to improve here and then here and then. So um yeah, I I'm I okay with that. So I. I, I respond to the comment given with open hearts, you know, even though sometimes I feel, um, well, um, I think I've done my best, but still a comment here and then, but it's okay. I try, I try, I try, you know, and I think the last, I mean, I tawaka because I think I fulfill, I tried to do all the requirements. Um, I have uh, put all my efforts 
uh, and then, uh, well, um, and I leave it to God. So yeah, that's all from me. So it's very short sessions, but I welcome any, um, any question that you would like to ask me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Daya. Um, I think I might, I might have misheard something. This is your, not your first time, was it? Yes, it's not my first time, yeah. Applying or getting? Applying. <laughs> Applying, okay. All right, so it's, it is still your first time getting the um, FRGS grant? Uh, yes, after a few attempts. Uh, well, I changed my topic. Um, uh, you know, I try, try and error. Uh, try and error here and then, um, yeah. So um, I think was the first, the previous one. I wasn't in charge. You know, I'm not the leader. So I really, I really, uh, I don't. Deep, I mean, the idea doesn't come from me. So I don't have the feelings, you know. But when when it come to the um, my current topic, I have that feeling. This is my topic. I want to get it through. That's the feeling that I have. So it's really pull me, pull me to put to put all my energy and strength to it. So even though the last minute thing I got the letter of intent, I really, I really feel, oh, this is this is this is the the luck I, I could do for the best, mm -hmm. you know. And I had the feeling that I'm I'm gonna get it. I had that feeling. <laughs> yeah. It was the same for me. Um I applied uh, three times uh before I managed to get it. So you know there's there's a lot of learning process, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um is there any questions um, to Dr. Hidayah? Um, anyone, especially from social science? If you have any, I think it will be the best time to ask. No? Okay, so um, thank you, Dr. Hidayah. Uh, fortunately, there's, there's no questions. Um, I'm guessing it's um, I'm, I'm not sure whether most of us are from science, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, it was a good sharing. Um, and um, we actually have one more last session for those who perhaps wants to um, ask questions. Oh, there's, there's one question over here. So before we move to the last session, um, the question uh, from Dr. Nuzatil asks, Dr. Hidayah, how much you budgeted for your FRGS proposal? And perhaps also how many years? Oh, all right. Thank you, doctor. Uh, right. Since it's um, uh, I budgeted for two years because um, um, because it's a um, uh, it's a legal study, so we don't we don't need any software to run or so. My budget was seventy seven thousand seventy seven thousand. Yeah. So uh, because most are uh, doctrinal studies, right? Because our our RO, 2RO is from the legal, more doctrinal study, only, only uh, my, uh, my, um, uh, my other researcher, they need more budget. So that's why we, uh, we don't put uh, uh, much budget, only 77,000. And I got it without any deduction, Alhamdulillah. I mean, yeah, because I knew that some, someone, um, uh, they, they deduct it, right? But mine, Alhamdulillah, I got what I want, Alhamdulillah. Shukur, yeah. And, and and my best guess is most uh a large sum of the uh, the fund goes to students. Uh yes yes I have I planned um I have um to, uh, one uh, master student yeah. Mm. yeah okay all right any other more question no okay thank you Dr Hidayah uh, um we will move to the last session um this last session is more on um. Uh, open session uh, for everyone to ask anyone um, any questions. If you do, do have any questions uh, that perhaps you have missed, uh, especially it might be uh, for uh, Dr. Hima or, or perhaps to um, Kit Fridaus. If you have any, you can ask now um, while we are still here. Anyone? Or, or perhaps I can ask the uh, uh, Kit Fridaus first. Um, as, as we all know, uh, the FRGS has a lot of priority research areas. We have the domain, we have the clusters, we have um, my STIE 1010, um, SPV, SDG, and, and I'm not sure what, what um, other groups will come next. Um, this question is especially for, for Chief Fidaus. 
So do you have any data to showcase uh, or, or to that, that you have analyzed perhaps on which area or priority area um, is the ones that UM is strong at in terms of um, FRGS or, or, or in, in general for the whole grant? Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Hadi, for the, for the question. Okay, actually, uh, after we see the regard, uh, regards of uh, FRGX, we will do some analysis. Lah. So far, I would say, I would say that Mohi doesn't, doesn't have any priority areas, but based on our achievement, the basic medical science is the highest, lah, highest uh, ocean. Lah. Uh, for our project. By the way, uh, maybe later we will share, uh, we, we can share with uh, all the uh, researchers uh, later on uh, the, the breakdown for each uh, area. Mm. Okay, that, that would be great because uh, yeah. like Dr. Hima said, um, you know, originally she's from science, but changing field sometimes helps. So, so perhaps, you know, knowing this information will help all the other researchers as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any other question from the floor? Or, or perhaps, um, okay, if there's none, um, I have two more things that I would like um, everyone to participate. So this is number one. Um, Okay, so there's a poll over there, just looking at um, um, the audience. Uh, what is your, so to say, academic post? Um, are you a professor, associate prof, senior lecturer, lecturer um, in this particular session? Because, you know, it might be helpful for us to um, target the group of, of uh, people uh, better. Um, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so uh, please fill in that one. Okay, we we had Dr. Mugunda just now, but uh, perhaps he have left. Um, so that one is associate prof. <laughs> oh, we do have, yep. Okay, so while waiting for that, um, last but not least, uh, I would say thank you to everyone for spending a bit of your time to listen to all our panelists. Um, thank you to the panelists for, you know, preparing um, your slides. I know it will take some time. I know we are all busy with our exams. We just finished it last week. Um, and now we need to do all our course filing. So there's, there's a lot of things to do. Um, and of course, Jake Fidel is always busy. Um, there's no free time for him. <laughs> okay, um, so last but not least, can we, uh, for those who want to participate in a photo um, taking session, uh, you can please open your camera. Then we will take a, a photo.